Today, we're going to import data from the web to Excel. We're going to be using get and transform from the data tab. This used to be the Power Query add-in, but since Excel 2016, it's a part of Excel. It's a super useful feature that connects to different data sources, transform and loads data for you so that you can do further analysis on it. If this sounds complicated to you, don't worry. All of this is going to be done with a few clicks. And the best part is that once we have it set up, the data can be refreshed with just a click of a button. Let's get to it. Let's do two examples. In the first case, we're going to import spot prices for petroleum from a web page into Excel. And in the second case, we're going to import the weather forecast for the next 10 days. Now we're going to do it in a dynamic way. So the data that we import is going to be connected to the original web page. So whenever we want to get the newest information, all we have to do is refresh our table. Let's start with spot prices. First step is to find the website from which you want to import the data from. In this case, I'm going to import the data from the US Energy Information Administration. Let's go to sources, petroleum and other liquids. That's the information that I want. Now, obviously, one way of getting this into Excel is to just copy this, press Control C, go to Excel, press Control V. And if you're lucky, everything is going to be recognized properly by Excel. The downside of this is it's not connected to that web page. So if you need this information on a continuous basis, you have to repeat the steps. What we're going to do instead is to connect this information to that page so that all we need to do is open our Excel file and refresh our data. So I'll just remove this. Let's go and grab the URL of that page. Let's go back to Excel, go to the data tab and get the data from web paste the URL, click on OK. This is going to launch the query editor and it's going to try to find the tables on this page. Now we have the ability to switch from table view to the web page view just to make sure that we are on the correct page. Now you can switch back by selecting table view here. This looks like the table I want to import. If I'm happy with this and I don't want to make any additional changes on this or add any transformation, I can load this directly to my page. And if I want to load it to my existing page, I'm going to go with load to and select existing worksheet, click on OK. This is going to create a query to that page. You can see the query right here. When I hover over it, we can see when it was last refreshed and the data source that it's connected to. This all looks good, but let's say the fact that these are empty is going to give me problems in my further analysis. So let's assume I have formulas that are referencing this and I need these to be filled. I can go and add a transformation step to this. So let's launch Power Query again. I'm going to double click on the query here and add a step to fill these down. So let's go to transform up here. We can see fill and fill down. Nothing happened when I clicked on this, although I can see the step here, but I don't see these being filled down here. So it looks like these are not recognized as empty by Power Query. So I'm going to add a step before I fill this down, and I'm going to make sure that these are really empty. So with this highlighted, I'm going to go back to the Home tab, click on Replace Values. It asks me if I'm sure I want to insert a step in between. Yes, I do. So go with Insert. The value to find is just an empty string and the value I want to replace it with is null. Now this is seen by Power Query as really empty. So when I go to the fill down step, I can see everything being filled down correctly. So I'm going to update this name, call it spot prices, press enter, close and load. Now my query is updated. Every time I want to grab the new information, all I have to do is go up here and refresh or right mouse click and refresh the query. Now you also have some query options. If you click on the drop down arrow here and go to connection properties, you can refresh this every 60 minutes or adjust the minutes from here. You can also refresh data when you open the file. So I'm just going to remove these in this case and go with OK. That was really easy, right? 
So now let's take a look at importing the weather forecast for the next 10 days. Imagine you get a new job at a hotel and your boss asks you to print out the weather forecast for the next 10 days. And this is something you need updated every day so that the tourists that are there can always take a look at the weather forecast for the next 10 days. So this is what you do. You come and you just Google weather forecast for New York City. So that's where you're working for, let's do 10 days. We get weather.com. This looks good. That's the information I want to get in Excel and have it connected to this page. So now that I have the URL, I'm going to copy it, go to data from web and paste our URL in here. Click on OK. It's creating a connection to weather.com. It's recognized the different tables we have here. That's the one we want. Now there is some information in here that I don't need like these ones. And you can see that the column titles, the headers have shifted because description should belong here and high and low should be for this one. So I'm just going to go and transform the data before I load it to my Excel sheet. Let's first off delete what we don't need and remove the last three columns here. The only columns that I'm interested in is the day, which is the first one, then the description and high low. Now these are not seen as numbers, but in this case, that's fine because this is just going to be a report that I'm going to show the tourists. I'm not going to perform any mathematical operations on this. But if I wanted to do that, so let's say if I wanted to calculate the Celsius values, I have to make sure these are recognized as numbers before I do that transformation. So in this case, I'm fine with Fahrenheit and I'll just go with this data set. Close and load to, click on existing worksheet, click on OK. So that's the weather forecast for the next 10 days. Now all I have to do every day is just to refresh this to get the latest information. But since I really want to impress my boss, I'm going to do one additional step. I'm going to add an emoji to this so that whenever we see rain or shower, we see an umbrella emoji. So the tourists know they got to be equipped. Now, this is something I learned from Frederick and from Oz. So there is a blog post and a video on this. And I'm going to add the link to these in the description of this video. So check it out. They're really fun. First step is to get the emoji that I want. I'm going to use the windows emojis by clicking on the windows button and the period. Then let's just type in rain. That's the one I want. So let's just click away and copy this. Okay. So don't forget to copy this before you go to power query. So control C and press enter. Let's go back to our query. So I'm just going to double click this. Now I just realized I forgot to name this table and why weather and press enter. Now the next step is to add that rain emoji. Wherever we have the word rain or shower, it should show the umbrella here. So let's add a column. I'm going to go with conditional column in this case. Let's call this be equipped and just go through the steps here. If column name is description, if this contains the word I have rain here, then I want my umbrella emoji. So I'm going to press control V because remember I copied this before I came here. Next one is else if description contains the word shower, I want to have my umbrella emoji as well. Otherwise I'm just going to go with nothing and click on OK. That adds the umbrellas here, drag it and bring it beside description. These are my steps that are going to be applied every single time I refresh the data. We're done. Let's go back, close and load this. Okay. So that's my updated report. Now tomorrow when I get to work, all I have to do is open my Excel file and refresh this sheet. And I have the updated information in here. I hope you found something new here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already so that you can get updates when I put out new videos here.